I ordered a liar harp kit. Should we build it? It's just a box now, actually. It's just a box. <laughs> the harps are there. Right, as a bit of a change from synthesizer stuff, I have bought a kit. I have bought a little harp kit. came today it's really light um, this was like 20 pound or something super cheap okay using a knife with one hand yeah that's a good idea let's, let's take a look Liar DIY manual. How's your Chinese? Mine is not so good. Yep, all instructions are in Chinese. Nope, no. no. On the other side, the instructions are in English. I bet it's really poor English, but we'll <laughs> I'll take poor English over Chinese. I've included some 320 grit. That's nice. Six, oh, 600 grit. And some strings. Uh, these are the sort of tuning peg things. I'm going to have a guess and a bridge by the look of it. A tuner. Good. And this is the liar. So it's actually there's no there's no real woodwork as such. You know, it doesn't. You know, you, you know, it's obviously you the main body is obviously all still, still is is glued together. Um, which I guess is fine because doing this doing this wood bending is. Is a hassle because you have to steam the wooden stuff, and that is hard. Well, it's not hard. It's just like you know, you need a specific piece of pieces of kit to do it. Um, so it's what it's like an hour's build. <laughs> I bet it sounds shocking, uh, but we'll we will see. We will see. Um, I've got a few ideas of how I'm going to treat the wood, um, involving fire. So let's see. In the hands, is that, I mean, is that, it does feel a bit more substantial than I perhaps thought, but it's definitely, you know, you can see why they included the sandpaper. That's as rough as old, rough as rough as anything, rough as my stubble. Not too bad. And then this, this, <laughs> the inside here, that looks really. Look at that, it's really old. That's really rough. Um, you can see this, the sandpaper. Yeah, that's pretty rough. So I need a good bit of sanding, and you see these holes are pretty roughly drilled. Um, but that's okay, that's okay. Um, also these edges, you might benefit from a nice gentle chamfer. Yeah, well, there we go. And I think that might make an interesting sample instrument. So what I'm doing here, I'm just doing a light burn uh, with a blowtorch uh, in my front garden, um, just to just to give it give 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 the sort of the playing surface or the upper surface, whatever, a bit of character. There is a Japanese wood burning art technique called show sugi ban. Uh, I'm probably um, not pronouncing that properly. Uh, apologies to my Japanese cousins. Um, this isn't that because in, in that Japanese technique there, I mean, they'll really turn the wood black and then uh, you need to sort of scrape it with a sort of a stiff brush. Um, this is just this is more of a lighter kind of touch um, because it's basically a hollow box. I didn't want to go too much with the fire and burn the thing, uh, basically. 
Um, so that's what's going on here. I think this is just at four, four times speed. Um, yeah. Right, then we're back from the front garden. That's the results after a light burn. I didn't want to go too crazy, um, like proper Japanese styling. So I didn't want to like set the whole thing on fire, basically. Um, but hopefully with some sanding and some varnishing, it can start to look kind of interesting. So this morning's job, go through the sandpapers, 180, 240, 320, see how I go with that. Obviously the kit's giving me some 600. So that could be nice, give it a nice smooth finish. So let's see how we go with the sanding. Sanding, 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 and more sanding. Sanding. All right, so I've pretty much been sanding this all day. <laughs> and it just doesn't look too bad, doesn't look too bad. There's quite a few tooling marks on this inside bit. I've done my best with this. And there's some heavy tooling marks just where, the, see just that corner there. Yeah, you can still see them. Well, you can see <laughs> quite a lot of tooling marks actually as I look on the camera. But for a 20 pound instrument, <laughs> I, I can live with that. I'm more interested in hear, hearing how it sounds. Um, I like how the burning kind of, kind of has, 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 has come out. That looks, uh, yeah, that looks good. So I think the secret weapon for finishing this off will be some uh, Crimson uh, Custom Guitars finishing oil, which might be seen as a bit of a sort of a bit over the top for, again, what is a really, really cheap, like hobby liar kit. Um, but thing is I've got it hanging around, so I might as well use it. Other options, you could do linseed oil. That, that would probably come out looking really nice. Uh, Danish oil. Um, and then I think if you did the yeah, if you did linseed, obviously you could finish it with a with a with a wax finish. So something like um, something like a you know a finishing wax would be nice. Or even have I got my beeswax? I've got some beeswax somewhere. I can't find that. But I think today, actually, I think we can still do the wax um, after the oil. I think I think I've seen um, Ben Crow do that. So yeah, um, I'm going to open the windows here and put put on a put on a jacket because it'll be cold, and then do my first coat. Alrighty, so here we are after we've had a few coats of the Crimson Custom Guitar Oil, um, and we've got a couple of coats of uh, just finishing wax on it. Looking pretty nice. So obviously that that's um. That, that, that top has had a bit of uh, fire, that's what it looks like, just unadulterated by fire. Doesn't look too bad, doesn't look too bad. Um, yeah. Pretty happy, pretty happy with how it's come out. Um, now we're going to try and put some strings on it, where I fear it could all go horribly wrong. But let's see. These. This this doesn't feel particularly um, sort of sort of solid in there. Um, so once I've got string, the, the, the tension of the strings on these, um, yeah, I'm not sure how good they're going to be with this little with this little tool. Usually these have a big wooden handle attached. Um, bridge plastic bridge. Um, I'm going to put a little tiny little dab of super glue just on the bottom of there and put that in there. The, the the reset for the bridge is a little little bit too big. Um so I don't I don't want this yeah a little bit too 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 wide as well. So I don't want that too much too much float that too much sort of play in that. So a tiny 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 bit of super glue. Now the strings are numbered. Um they do give the pitches in the in the little manual there, which I've written on the piece of cardboard there. Um, and I'm doing the thickest string, i.e. the lowest pitch, will be f will be to the, the right. Because I think if you if you hold it against your body this side, then the lowest string is furthest away from you. I think that's right, but I might be wrong. That is out of tune. But the strings are on. 
let's try and tune it. Well, that sounds terrible. Um, because <laughs> these are fresh strings. I mean, if this was a guitar, you would tend to leave these to sort of sort of settle in. Um, even, you know, sort of st stretch stretch them in a bit. Um, so I'll leave this overnight. Let let let, let the strings settle in. Let let all the wood just sort of settle, uh, and then try tuning it again tomorrow morning. What I'm finding is a really small adjustment adjustment with the wrench makes a big difference to the tone so you're really making really minute adjustments at, at, at these pegs um, which I get you know I mean this is obviously this is the very earliest kind of sort of peg tuning system um, a lit you know a sort of you know no ratios at all <laughs> it's just you know um, makes you appreciate modern guitar tuning pegs um, but anyway she's sort of finished doesn't sound amazing but it could make for a really interesting sample instrument. Let's just talk about um, tuners before we look at the final harp. Um, a clip-on tuner is super useful. Um, you can pick these up for about 10 quid. Um, clip that on and that helps you tune it. Or you could use um, like a like a smartphone app. This is the one I use. I think it's called N Track Tuner. Uh, so you uh, uh, Android, so there's, it, it, that, be, there's loads of tuning apps out there. Uh, just look on your app store. Um, if you've got one of these tuning apps, you can play the game of perfect pitch. C. Mm, I haven't got perfect pitch, clearly. Anyway, so oh, watch out for the sharp corners <laughs> on the strings. Um, this is the final. Oops. This is the final um, harp, lyre, lyre harp. So yeah, um, hasn't hasn't come out too bad. Um, oh, can you see the blood there? Yeah. These, these need trimming, but like properly, not like the half ass job that I, that I did. Um, anyway, um, it's out of tune. So I'm going to tune it again and uh, we can hear. So I've gone for tuning wise, the, the lowest pitch and the thickest string, string furthest from me. So it's a D and D, E. You can hear that E's gone flat already. D, E, uh, G, A. B, D, E. So you've got octaves there. Okay, that's better. Just making it up. I'm just making it up. Um, apologies to all the harpists and the lyre players out there. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Clearly. It actually sounds a lot sweeter than I was expecting for 20 quid. Um, sort of sounds okay. Obviously, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of small. Um, and these things go out of tune every five minutes, it seems. Um, 
I don't know whether it's just because this, the strings are new and it's just they need to just some time to sort of bed in. Um, I mean, I've already been tuning this on and off for a couple of days now. Um, I think it'll sort of stay in tune long enough for like a little session. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I think this was a pretty, pretty, pretty fun, pretty fun build um, over the start of my Christmas holiday. Um, if you know, if you want to entertain a couple of kids for for a day or a couple of days, this is this is um, this is a good little project for them. Um, obviously, you don't have to do the fire thing like I did. You can just you know paint it or finish it with some varnish or some paint or wh whatever. I think linseed oil would look good. Um, I'd be interested to see how that would look, um, but you could do some interesting effects with tape, masking tape and painting uh, and get some Van Halen sort of paint jobs going on or some splatter jobs or some, you know, you could sort of, sort of spin this around on a, on a little spinny table and pour some paint on it. Yeah, there's all, there's all sorts of things you could do with it. Um, you know, it is a fairly easy sort of build. I mean, there's nothing to build. It's just sanding in it. It's just sanding and then, you know, putting these on and they they give you the tool for that don't lose that if, if, if you lose that i don't know you can maybe use a radiator key to tune it uh, I, I don't know or a spanner if you've got a small enough spanner but yeah um um will i be making a sample instrument from it yeah probably probably um but yeah good fun good fun <laughs>